turn with me, if you would, to Isaiah chapter 59. I'm going to read until you're hearing verses 20 through 21, but we'll be touching quite a few scriptures tonight. The text reads as follows, the Redeemer will come to Zion, to those who turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. As for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them, my spirit who is upon you, and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants. Nor from the mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, says the Lord, from this time and forevermore. Go ahead and take your seats. Let's start here. The Redeemer came for us. The Redeemer came for us. Without question, the Redeemer is the risen Messiah. We agree? Isaiah 29, verse 20 and 21 is a prophetic passage that's yet underway at this very moment. Stay with me if you will. Some prophecies from a dispensational aspect come to fruition incrementally. And so there are some prophecies that have been spoken, which have come to pass, which are coming to pass day by day, sometimes literally into individual by individual, conversion by conversion. Are you following what I'm saying? And so there are some that are coming into the faith that are realizing the redemption that has already been spoken over them before the world began and has been spoken and has been uttered in this text, in this scripture where we're starting from tonight. Are you with me so far? And so again, some prophecies come, from, come to fruition incrementally. Yeshua's birth activates the prophecy. And so in the time of Isaiah, which uh, many will call the fifth gospel, he is prophesying about the coming of Yeshua. Now we understand and we receive and we believe that Yeshua has already come once. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so he came once. And so his birth activates the prophecy. Watch this. His sacrifice facilitates the prophecy. And so his birth activates it because now the Redeemer has come because the Redeemer has been born. At conception, you can even say that the prophecy is activated. His sacrifice, his journey is, 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 is a work in the progress. Thank you, Holy Ghost. His journey to Calvary is a work in the progression into the prophecy. The progression of the prophecy. Are you following me? And so his sacrifice facilitates the prophecy. His death serves the prophecy. So everything that he does is just doing more for the prophecy. His death serves the prophecy because in order for him to be the redeemer, he had to be born first. He had to go through his journey to Calvary. He had to go to his journey to Golgotha. He had to be hung. He had to be pierced. He had to be crucified. Are oh, you hearing what I'm saying? So his his death, his death, his, his sacrifice rather facilitates the prophecy, and then his death serves the prophecy. Because though he was the redeemer before he came into sinful flesh, once he goes through death, what he's doing is he's serving it. But here's the thing: his resurrection empowers the prophecy. Ephesians 1 and 7 says this, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Say, I am a partaker of the richness of his grace. I'm a partaker, we are partaker of the riches of his grace because of the work of redemption, the finished work of Calvary. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? And the finished work of Calvary, watch this, doesn't just stop at the resurrection because it continues in his, res in his rising. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So it doesn't just stop at Calvary. It continues in his resurrection. So his resurrection empowers the prophecy. Don't miss this. His return will bring the prophecy to its ultimate fulfillment. I said his return will bring the prophecy to its ultimate fulfillment. This is what we have to understand about prophecies, that they are ongoing. They are underway at this very moment. There are things that God has spoken in the scriptures. He has spoken in times past that are still coming to pass right now. Because when he blessed Abraham and he said, the world, the nations will, will be blessed through your seed. We are still recipients of the promise that Abraham received. We are recipients of the prophecy that Isaiah is giving. Do you believe this? Follow me here. The new covenant is with us. Someone say Emmanuel. Uh-huh. God with us. The new covenant is with us. We are carriers and companions. We are carriers and companions. That means that we carry the covenant with us and we are companions by and with the covenant. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is so born in or engrafted. And so what is promised and what is spoken to Israel, we can partake in when we have received the spirit of adoption wherein we cry, Abba, Father. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Let's go to Hebrews 8. Hebrews 8, 10. Hebrews 8 and 10 reads this. It says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. And I will be they God, their God, and they shall be my people. According to verse 9, this covenant is not according to the one made before because its recipients did not continue. So there was nothing wrong with the previous covenant. The issue was with the previous people. And even though we have a new and a better covenant now in the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach, it is still on us. It is still incumbent upon us that we follow in his covenant. We have to accept his instructions. We still have to do his will. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so watch this. Since we have to follow his instructions, we're still under the law. Because that's what law is. Law is instructions. The first group of people didn't follow the set of instructions. And so he said, you can't follow it because we cannot follow God's instructions in the flesh. It, don't, it, it won't work. Say it won't work. So by the grace of God, God says, I'm going to give you a new covenant. And with the new covenant, I'm going to give you a spirit that won't just be upon you, but it'll also be within you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because even Yeshua himself, knowing that we know that he has Holy Ghost, he is, the Holy Ghost is in him. But for our sake, that when the Holy Ghost came down upon him, right? And so we understand that the Spirit and the lightning, the Holy Ghost came upon him. Yet when he has his first public sermon, if you will, he says this, he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, having the Spirit of the Lord within him. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He is making that prophecy manifest in that time. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so even though the Spirit of the Lord, he says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, nobody is going to deny that the Spirit of the Lord is within him. And so watch this. The Spirit of the Lord can be upon us and within us. Because watch this, the Spirit of the Lord is within us who have received salvation. Within us who have claimed Christ as our Savior. 
But if you've ever had it happen to you, there are sometimes when the Spirit is upon you and it moves differently. Because there are appointed times in our lives where God is going to move through us in a mighty way that doesn't happen all the time. There are some phenomenal moves of God. I hear this in the Holy Ghost. There are some phenomenal moves of God yet to be realized in your life. Say, he's going to do it through me. But all glory goes to him. That's how Yeshua did it, did he not? Let's go to Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10, 14 through 16. It reads as follows, for by one offering. Somebody say one offering. Uh -huh. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I want to read it again because I want to get the text here. For by one offering, we understand the one offering was his sacrifice, his crucifixion, his passion. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. How has he perfected those who are being sanctified unless it's a prophetic notion? How he had... That's the text, is it not? He has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Somebody say, I'm being sanctified. That's what holiness is. Holiness is being sanctified. It's underway right now. Say, I'm being sanctified. Right now. I am holy. I'm being sanctified. I am a saint. I'm being sanctified. It's, say it's ongoing. Mm -hmm. It's ongoing. It's ongoing. For by one offering he is perfected forever those who are being sanctified. Verse 15 says this. But the Holy Spirit also witnesses to us. For after he said before, meaning it's written. For after he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds I will write them. This witness is obtained from Jeremiah 31 and 33. Let's move here. The spirit of the Lord is upon us. Upon and within, which ushers emanation. I want you to understand, I want us to understand that emanation operates in the essence of the creator, the most high God. And so our actions originate from our source. And so when we are walking in the spirit of God, what emanation means is, is that that something is Flowing, it is emitting, it is operating from its source. So you hear what I'm saying? So our actions should originate from our source. And so when we're lying, our actions are. Originating from that source. However, when we are, or nevertheless, I should say, when we are operating in the things of God, when we are not minding the things of the flesh, but we are minding the things of the spirit, we are minding the things of the spirit, and that is what causes us to operate from our source, in the essence of our creator. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Our actions should originate from our sources. So when we're acting, not like when we're behaving and conducting ourselves, not in alignment with our source, that's when we need to repent, adjust, get back in alignment with God so we can continue to do his will. That we can do it every day and we can certainly do it at the appointed times that he has set for us.
Let's consider Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27. We dealt with this text not too long ago. It says this, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. Is anybody seeing what I'm seeing? He said, I will put a new spirit within you. That means if you're looking at the text, he's going he's gonna to change the spirit in you. Okay. He's going to change the spirit in you before he gives you his spirit. I want to read the rest of the text. I want to read the rest of the text here. He says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and will give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit. Do you see the difference in the spirits? So I'm going to give you a new spirit. So watch this. You cannot behave the way that you used to behave if I've given you a new spirit. So watch this, when we are acting out of character, watch this, we're not operating, not only are we operating outside of the spirit of God that dwells within us, we're operating outside of the spirit that he gave us. Because we're supposed to conduct ourselves in this new spirit that he gave us. Say, I'm supposed to have a new spirit. And so we're supposed to have a new spirit that aligns with his spirit. The conflict happens is when our old spirit tries to control the spirit of God. That's how we grieve Holy Ghost. When our old spirit, because what does the text say? I'm going to give you a new spirit. And see, sometimes we don't understand that not only do we have Holy Ghost, we're supposed to have. I can't tell you what you do have. I said we're supposed to have. I'm talking about people that are being sanctified. Let's be clear. People that are being sanctified are supposed to have because they've been given, they've been graced with a new spirit. So we shouldn't want our old selves to come out at any time. So watch this. You got to get past two layers of protection to even act up. You got to get past the new spirit that he gave you, and you got to get past the Holy Spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm going to give you a new spirit. Did he guarantee it? Yes, he did. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. Receive this. The word of the Lord is within us. He's written it on our hearts, and he's written it in our minds. And so watch this, there's word, there are word, there's word, there's scripture that you should know by heart. There's scripture that you should be able to not just recite, but live off the top of your head. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because watch this, if you were operating from your head, then you would conduct yourself like your source. We would do it. I don't want to point any fingers tonight. We would do it. And see, when we sin, what's happened is we've lost our head. But the word of the Lord is within us in consciousness, in conduct, in conversation, and in continuation. So often I'll talk about consciousness because the word of God ought to be on my mind even when I'm not speaking. It should be the way that I process. Because if you will, the word of God is like code. And cold tells the device that it's in. Cold tells the, the machine that it's in. It tells whatever it's written on how it's going to conduct itself. But see, here's the thing. We also have a mind of our own. Some of you may not be familiar with this term, but uh, there's a thing called jailbreak. 
And when you jailbreak your device, particularly your phones, when you jailbreak your phone, you go outside of the parameters of the creator's intention. So watch this. It will be able to do it, but that's not the way it was designed. And so we are able to sin, but that wasn't the design. Not when you have the instructions, not when you have the code. Not when you have the iOS, the initial operating system, the internal operating system. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So we're supposed to have his instructions. There's a, we are supposed to be, watch this, we are supposed to be the facilitation of emanation. Our actions should originate from our source. And when it doesn't, we need to align ourselves. It's just that simple. Again, the text from Ezekiel says this, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you will keep my judgments and do them. Romans 8, 1 through 5 declares, those who are in Christ walk according to the spirit mm. so that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Let me read it again. I said, those who are in Christ walk according to the Spirit so the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. I'll say it one more time. This is Romans. Y'all know what this is. I said, those who are in Christ walk according to the Spirit so the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. By the way, he let us walk. And so when you know you walked away from a sentence wherein we should have been, the verdict should have been guilty. But because we had a counselor, but when you have a counselor, you're supposed to follow the instructions of the counselor. You're supposed to follow the guidance of the counselor. The counselor should tell you not only how your posture should be, but how your conduct should be. What words that you should say. So that you can walk not according to the life that you came from, but according to the life that he gave us. And it shouldn't be that difficult when I'm operating in my new spirit with his Holy Spirit. It's interesting that David in the Tanakh says, created me a clean heart, a new one, and renew a right spirit in me. And then later on he says, take not thy Holy Spirit. Don't take it away from me. Here's the thing. He said, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit in me. So we need a renewed right spirit in us. So that as we're walking with Holy Ghost, there's no conflict. There should be no disagreement between the new spirit and the Holy Spirit. There should be no disagreement between our new spirit and the Holy Spirit. So when there's a disagreement with a spirit and the Holy Spirit, it's not the new spirit. Furthermore, Romans 8 says this, for those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. We've got to understand that ministry is a mindset. Ministry is a mindset. Can I give you the perfect example? Yeshua said, I did not come to be ministered to. I came to minister. He had a ministerial mindset. I came to serve. So watch this. When we become saved and while we are being sanctified, we should be ministering. And one of our ministries is the ministry of reconciliation, which is what bringing those who have not realized, who have not come to God, back to him. Am I making sense? 
This is key. The testament is continuous until completion. The testament is continuous until completion. Luke 21, 25 through 26, through 28. At the coming of the Son of Man, the text reads as follows, and there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity to see and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, This is prophetic. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Wait a minute. Let's go back. The Redeemer will come to Zion. See, if we only think about his birth, we don't understand the fullness of the prophecy. If we only think about the journey, we don't understand the fullness of the prophecy. If we only think about the crucifixion, we don't understand the fullness of the prophecy. If we only think about the resurrection, we don't understand the fullness of the prophecy because the prophecy includes his return. Because the fullness of redemption is when the Son of Man comes in a cloud. With power and great glory. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He says, now when these things begin to happen. And so until those things start happening, we got a work to do. Are you understand what I'm saying? So we've got developing to do until the head is ready. We've got developing to do until the head is ready. And the head is ready when the head is heavy. And the head is ready when the Father releases him. When he comes in a cloud full of great glory. This is how we got to understand. This is why as believers we need to be able to compartmentalize what the text is saying because watch this. That word was prophetic and that word is prophetic. Because incrementally from a dispensational aspect has increments of this not come to pass? Well of course it has. Because unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given. And we understand that he was born of a virgin. We understand that he had a journey until somewhere in the proximity of 30 years old when his mother pushes him, if you would, into purpose. And she says, turn that water into wine. And we understand that his ministry really begins when he goes into the Jordan, the same place Wherein the people passed over. Someone say till the people passed over. All of them. All of them. There are people that are going to pass over and there are people that are going to cross over who have not even been conceived yet. Because what we got to understand about the fullness of this prophecy is that you and I were in line, watch this, you and I were in line to receive this prophecy because we were predestined. And so watch this, before you were conceived, you were already redeemed. God help my soul. I said because the word was ready. The word was ready for us to make a decision. 
Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so in a similar fashion, there are things that God already has in line for you. As soon as you make up your mind, the date was already decided. The date was already decided for Abraham before Abraham ever turned 75. The date was already assigned. It was already set for David while he was still working in his father's flock. And one of the beautiful things I love about David is, watch this, he wasn't invited to the consecration. But God called him for the coronation. So just because you're not invited with everybody else who looks like they're the one, God has an anointing for you. God help me. God has an anointing set just for you. Say, God has an anointing set just for me. Say, I have an appointed time. Watch this. We have an appointed time when God is going to work through us in a phenomenal way. The date's already been set. The date's already been set. Do you believe this? Don't miss this. His return will bring the prophecy to his ultimate fulfillment. Take this with you. Redemption has positioned us to produce. I say redemption has positioned us to produce through his blood. Being forgiven by grace. Say, I've been forgiven by grace. Watch this. You, we've been forgiven by grace so that we can bring to fruition all the things that he has set for us to do. Through his blood, being forgiven by grace, having a new covenant. Say the new covenant is with us. Make it personal. Say the new covenant is with me. Watch this. Having his spirit. Do you have his spirit? I want to ask you, not only do you have his spirit, do you have the new spirit that he gave you? Do we have the new spirit that he gave us? Y'all know I got to make it corporate. I ain't pointing fingers because I needed as, I needed as much as the next person. Having his spirit, watch this, having his instructions written in our mind and heart. Receive this. We are the redeemed of the Most High. We are the redeemed of the Most High being sanctified. We are the redeemed of the Most High being, I don't know if I, I said we are the redeemed of the Most High being sanctified. We are the fruit of redemption. Say, I am the fruit of redemption. We are the fruit of redemption. We've been positioned to produce. We've been positioned, uh, positioned to produce by the blood of the Lamb. We've been positioned to produce by the forgiveness and the redemption of our sins. We've been positioned to produce by his grace. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say, I've been positioned, positioned to produce. Because we have the new covenant. Because we have a new spirit. Because we have his spirit. Because his instructions are written on our mind and our heart. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And if we love him like we say we love him, then we would do his commandments. Those are his instructions. Those are his words. It's not up for debate. 
It's not up for debate if you have a new spirit and you have his Holy Spirit. It's only up for debate if we are still operating in the flesh. Because the flesh has its own spirit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are the fruit of redemption. Do you believe this? Do you receive this? Give God praise right there. Didn't want to belabor the hour. Didn't want to hold you long. Just want to give you enough word to realize that we are the fruit of redemption. We are the fruit of the prophetic. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say, I am the fruit of the prophetic. Because it's yet underway. Give him another hand clap of praise.